our top 20 favorite spooky Halloween scary video game music tracks. Will they fit the theme? That'll be the main thing. Will they fit the theme? The last one was from Undertale. Great Halloween track that I can't remember the name of because I just closed it. Let's start off with something from Pathologic 2. The name of this song is Miracle Workshop. there some really nice bass there glad i'm listening to my big speakers that was from pathologic too a lot of the pathologic themes we've heard before have been very really disturbing like the village themes and they're more like a like an attack and really frightening this seems more like i guess this is the title of the song is miracle workshop so this is sort of like in resident evil how you have the save room how you have a place to relax where it still is a bit disturbing in some of i mean the tones are definitely a dark cavernous reverby like something is wrong but where you are right now is a good spot comforting and disturbing yeah you know that there's something really disturbing just outside this song and just before and after the song but the part that it's doing right now is uh, is just nice All right, next up is going to be from Final Fantasy IX. This is called Final Battle. Now, you might think Final Fantasy IX. How's that going to be Halloween-y? Well, let's find out. Thank you. 
Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a good enough song to warrant the uh, the length of it. And the way it starts out, like you guys already covered in the chat, it sounds like a bunch of bodies are all around you, like souls. To me, it sounds like... I, I assumed the boss was, because I've never finished this game, the boss was like built on the souls, hey prince, of, of other people, you know, like all the all the victims it's had, all the all the people it sucked the life from to maintain this unlikely existence. Hades was going to be the final boss? What is this, Kingdom Farts? So it sets a nice tone, and then it goes into more traditional Final Fantasy boss fare, stuff that we've heard from Nobuo Uematsu before, but in a way... You can definitely tell this is like a little more frightening the way he like puts effects on on his synths that he doesn't normally do to kind of give them this delayed echoed but like off from each other so it's sort of like a bit of like a terrifying psychedelic hallucination but he can't resist himself getting a little bit hopeful in some parts uh Wilmot's is so bloody good okay that was from final fantasy 9 next up is from something called sweet home sweet home central I mean, so this was what, on the NES or like a... The textures are really, really beautiful for what they did with the ground. I'd be very, very impressed if that was on the NES or if it was more on maybe one of the computers at the time that were pretty uh, pretty popular in Japanese gaming. It looks good. I mean, the textures on the, textures on the walls, um, it's like these... The animations for the doors. Oh, look at the way the doors open. Very, very... Okay. This was actually made by the Resident Evil fella? Pretty terrifying. And, like, looks... W way ahead of its time. Compared to everything else that would have been coming out. This came out of, what, like, 1989? It's pretty fantastic. But this was what they would do. Is Like, you can see a lot of sort of D&D &D style... Um... Oh my god, look at that, it's like a little Chucky doll. See, when you do stuff like this where it's a drawing, you can get so much more life out of, uh, out of a, a limited um, hardware, right? Man, that is really, really nice. Very, very impressive. Sweet Home. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. I cannot believe that was on an NES. That was... Uh, that is very, very impressive. That, that blows my mind. Sweet Home. Oh, you learn something new every day. Hopefully. Otherwise, you might as well be dead. All right, next up is from Xenosaga 1. Something or other. Ruth Dixon! We're on track number four, I think. It's from Xenosaga 1.
but so far this is my favorite one of the week. It's so beautiful. Like it gets the idea of what's scary, but it's just so gorgeously done. So haunting. Like you just want to keep going. It, it'd be like if somebody really terrifying appeared, but you wanted to keep going. You wanted to keep seeing what they were going to show you. And then they rip off your space skin and destroy your sun heart. This is so good. Wow. It's like you die and you think you're going to heaven, but you're actually going to hell. Hey, happy boo afternoon to you, Mum. All right, that was bloody gorgeous. Very nice. All right, next up, probably something I would assume is a little more... a little friendlier. This is from Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. glad to have my big speakers for nice you know a lot of dancey stuff I, I tend to tune out on because I think oh this is going to be a bit boring um because they generally don't have a lot of like melodic movement but this track goes some like really nice places some emotional places right there oh yeah oh yeah Shantae and the Pirate's Curse I love it. All right, next up is from Silent Hill 3.
Yeah, it's they have this like I, I always love how Silent Hill will um, use the rock format in, in video games. It does give them such like a unique feel. This is not super scary. This is more. I guess I could see this played in some sort of like dark rock club in some 90s movie or something. I think it fits, but it definitely, they don't use any of the normal tricks that people would normally do. Other than, I'd say, in the beginning when they have things that are purposely discordant from each other, almost like out of tune. I think that that gives it, like, this is kind of spooky sounding, kind of dark sounding, but it's more, it's a lot more fun than you'd expect. So, pretty nice. Next up, from Jeremy, Mr. Late Entry, this is from Bloodborne, Hail the Nightmare. was very Halloweeny. Bloodborne. Diegetic music is where. <laughs> oh, mum, with the big burn. Oh my god. just imagine this music playing as they like lower all of all the liberals into vats of acid and they set fire to CNN <laughs> good one mom that's my mom everybody <laughs> Okay, next up from Namco X Capcom.
pretty nice track. It's got a nice kind of propulsive beat, and I don't feel I don't feel like this track does kind of anything good. It's not like ex no. The track doesn't do anything exceptionally great in, in any one in, in any one category, but it just comes together really nicely, and it's something that you could listen to for a while, which is important in game music too, right? Like you have to know the context the tone that it's setting, where it's playing, and if you have to listen to it for potentially dozens of hours. I'd be interested in checking that out. Namco X, is that on... I'm going to guess it's on Nintendo DS or 3DS. It does have a good... Vam yeah, that's a good way to put it. It has kind of like an elegant, soaring, slightly sinister, but regal sense to it. PS2. Oh, uh, PS2 had just... You could put out anything on the PS2. The PS2 and the DS in that era. It's just so fun for the variety of games. All right. Next up is from Final Fantasy IX again. No, Final Fantasy VIII. I'm wrong. This is called Castle. fun track Nobuo Matsu when he wants to he's such a master of taking you so many places in a, in a tune like letting you feel a lot of different emotions and most of all just being really fun and you can hear the joy that he has in the way that he's composing <clears throat> I have a, the two legs behind me and then another one in a chair there's a headless mannequin all right, beautiful stuff. Can't go wrong with Nobuo Matsu. He can do anything. Except put music in a mainstream game now. Although that's not true. He had a, he had a song in Final Fantasy VII Remake. All right, next up is from Portal 2. Portal 2.
That was Portal 2. It was the ghost of Ratman or something. Nice. Yeah, like a spooky little tune works in the game. No, I, yeah, I wouldn't put that uh I wouldn't put that on outside. The voice is one of the mysteries of the game since apparently some of the stuff is saying relates to Half-Life. You'll never get Half-Life, but you won't. You'll try, but you'll never get Half-Life. <laughs> Next up is from... I think it's from Pathologic 2 again. You be the judge. Window to the past. bet you that works really well in the game I think you get the point of it I like the tones it almost sounds like you're playing one of those uh, hongs they look like a walk and they're sort of round and they have these little pastools on them postules they look like big bumps and you kind of bang them and they go bong, 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 bong. it's almost like a steel drum but instead of being uh, concave it's convex if you know what I'm talking about I probably use those backwards Pretty nice. When does that play in the game? Yeah. Not always the best to listen to it on its own, but it's good to get an idea of it. That works works pretty well. I like it. Next up is... From a Castlevania game... Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night, I think.
on, man. That's really good. There's so much feel in this track. The bends are done really, really, like, so soulful. Whoa. And what I like is um, in the earlier bits of it, where they put the kick, it's like a little bit delayed. It's this kind of John Bonham placement of it where it's a bit swung, so it gives it this kind of like oomph. I think that'll probably come back after this part here. Oh no, it grows. Ooh. So this is what I'm talking about with that. It's like a few milliseconds later than you would expect. Which gives it a nice like heaviness. So much feel. Beautiful. One of the best soundtracks, one of my favorite soundtracks of all time, that Symphony of the Night soundtrack. And what a nice surprise it was. Especially in an era where everything was like 3D. We, we need to have simple polygons and really blurry textures. How dare you make a two-dimensional game with gorgeous hand-drawn art, the likes that will probably never be seen again in a Castlevania game. Even when they go back and make the throwback, what was it, blood, blood-stained blood Ritual of the Night or whatever, still didn't look as good as these hand-drawn animations. Gorgeous stuff. Next up is from... You tell me. You know what this reminds me of? Um, when the, when somebody takes like a like a funny video of somebody falling over and they hit their head, and then they turn that into a song, <laughs> just like a compilation of people smacking, like hitting their balls and going ow, 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 and then auto tuning it. Okay, all right, I get it. It's spooky. Wow, can you imagine having to fight a battle with that? Jesus Christ. Okay, that was from Secret of Mana, the Dark Lich. Takes a lich to know a lich. Next up is from Zelda, Majora's Mask, Ikana's... Ikana Valley. Ikana Valley.
the idea of Majora's Mask. I tried playing it. We did a game club. I didn't get too far in it. <clears throat> but I love the idea. And it's something that happened in from a different era where they took everything they had from Ocarina of Time and said, we're going to give you another N64 3D Zelda game in a year. And they just took all the assets they had and then flipped it on its head, introduced new game mechanics with the time and were able to do some really impressive things because all the NPCs were on a set schedule moving around. They could be way more active than they ever were before and have more to do. And because they flipped everything upside down, it did give it, give, made it more spooky. I mean, Link starts off the game. He looks like he's dying. Looks like he's dead on a horse. And then is you start the game transformed into a, a Deku kid. It's, uh, it is pretty fantastic. And it's... Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, everybody would have wanted just more of that. I was wondering if they were going to do that with Breath of the Wild, because that was so different. And maybe they were going to flip that one on its head, but I don't think so. I think that they're just going to make Breath of the Wild 2. Oh yeah, the logo's very creepy. I wonder if you could do that now, because I think if you announce something like, we're going to give you a flipped version of this. In a world where Majora's Mask didn't exist, because if they said we're going to do a Majora's Mask to Breath of the Wild, people would be really excited because I think Majora's Mask has just grown in love, and especially with the versions available on the 3DS, being able to play it again on the Wii and the Wii U, and not the Switch, bastards. Well, a Link to the Past is the that's where everything came together and worked, huh? I love so many of the Jackson Majora's Mask, Astro Conservatory, Astro Observatory, and the Four Giants, and um, uh, the place where all those dancing people live. The, De the Deku place? I don't know. All right, let's do it. Next up is track from Raymond 2, The Great Escape. Beautiful. The, the Raymond music is always so polished and intelligent, and there's a lot of space in between all the instruments, and it really paints this sort of magical world that fits the visuals of the game so well. Very Danny Elfman, very 90s Hollywood, Pixar animation. I'm with Yusuf Len, where I, I really appreciate the Raymond games, but I never, when I'm done playing a session of it, I, I never feel like I want to go back to it. 
But when I do play it, I always think, there's some really cool ideas here. All right. Next up is yet another Pathologic song. This one's called Poo Poo Magoo. No, wait, it isn't. It's Silent Hill, baby! I saw the name of the track and the, the a bit of the cover stuff, and I thought this is another pathologic from Leenot. That's why I skipped it earlier. But then I heard, then I saw Konami, and I heard that drum beat. Oh, baby! I'm not, I'm still not a huge fan of vocals in these songs. I find they're a, a bit of a drag to listen to. They're not as inspiring as as using that melody space for an instrument to tell more of a story than these like forced lyrics usually translated. Pretty cool. Kind of makes me miss playing uh, Persona. All right, next up, this is from... I'm going to guess from the cover art that that is... Sui Coden? Two? And, oh, it actually says it right there. Gen So Sui Coden... Wouldn't want it any other way. Y'all ready for this? Banana.
Oh, I love the uh, I love the movements, the chord movements in there. Really fun, really inspiring. Oh man, I didn't realize Sue Coden had these kind of moments in them. Why would you be fighting a, a vampire? Isn't it more like historical drama, fantasy? Those I'd love to finally try those games. I gotta add them to my list of games to try. I'm gonna do it right now. Games to try. Sui Coden. I think I bought them all for PS3. It's really annoying that I have to keep my PS3 around for all the PS1 games that I bought when they were super cheap. Can't they just bring this stuff forward? I'd gladly buy it again or pay that conversion fee, you know? Alright, next up, another one from Final Fantasy. This time, Final Fantasy 7. We've had 9. We've had 8. We now have 7. This one's called who are you? Who are you? simple track but very very effective really kind of like lonely synth piano the way that the instruments are um, put together I really I really like sort of the um, the pairing of like what sounds like a detuned piano and then kind of like this echoey synth way off it sounds like you're sort of looking down a long cave and not liking what you see at the end of it really great track Oh, yes. Next up, this is from Pathologique 2. Again. might be one of my favorite tracks of the week tighten my top three for sure this is really nice what a nice surprise especially after hearing so much music from pathologic and that actually giving you the relief of something nice why is this play at the beginning or the end or something Oof, such a nice groove that's a beautiful track nice one all right, we're coming up to the last couple tracks. This one is from one of the original spooky Halloween type games. When I think of like an actual just Halloween, an actual Halloween based game, 
This is from Medieval. from medieval very nice very danny elfman yeah disney-ish kind of like more of like a danny elfman um tim burton vibe of this kind of spooky magical it has the the magical tingly twinkly hollywood sound from the 90s um with like this big kind of bombastic almost like the evolution of uh like warner brothers cartoons music all right this last one is from sonic cd sonic cd Yeah, Sonic CD was 
really interesting. It was very... Sure. This is called what? Boss. Okay. Let's see. Boss Sonic CD Japanese. This place, every time you fight a boss at the end of the couple levels... Holy shit! <laughs> That's terrifying. Or is it the final boss music? Wow, there you go. Sonic always has such great music. And yeah, they were having a lot of fun with the Sega CD. Being able to put stuff on uh, in CD format, you were able to... I mean, you could do so much more. Before, you were limited to what you could do on an 8-bit system, and then 16-bit with the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. And the Sega Genesis not being great at samples and being really mostly relegated to like awesome FM synth sounds like this. And if you played it like you were a synth band, it worked great. But for them to all of a sudden have access to a CD, it's just amazing. Like, to have, um, like, to be able to actually take real recorded music and voices. And it was, the, the sound all of a sudden jumped so far ahead of what you could put on the screen. It was pretty amazing. In the Japanese and PAL versions, they had enough fun with it that the time travel mechanic in the game, the past themes, use the Mega Drive sound chip of the future and present, use the CD audio. Oh, that's so smart. I should, uh, I should try playing that one again. I've done Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 in the channel. We need to do Sonic C. I put up a video talking about the cyberpunk delays. If you guys want to uh, check that out. And tomorrow at 11 a.m. there is a... Uh, I'm going to go through like my top five, I think. Top five spooky, scary games and my experiences with those. We've been having some problems with uh, uploads, so upload speed. So doing like full-on game streams is pretty tough. Um, yeah, and we need to pick next week's theme. But for now, for the high-quality recording on YouTube that will be available later, if you want to watch this again, I'll be uploading this version that people are going to be seeing on YouTube. But uh, we'll end it off right here. <laughs>